This podcast is sponsored by Tusk, an open source non ICO crypto project powered by community. Check them out on the web at tusk.network. That's T U S C dot network. The Rob McNeely program is the nexus of cryptocurrency, blockchain technology, and entrepreneurship. Now, welcome to the program. Hey folks, uh, welcome to the show. I am Rob McNeely and today I am real excited. I am talking to Brandon Cooper. He is the co-founder and CEO of AFID, uh, a LA-based startup working in artificial and blockchain. So let's welcome to the show. Brandon, how are you today, sir? Doing well. How about yourself? You know, I can't complain so much. It's a beautiful day out west. I uh, got out and got some sun today working out in the yard. So um, that's good nice. considering we're in the pandemic apocalypse. I actually feel fine. So that's good. Same here. <laughs> <laughs> so before we jump into this, uh, tell me a little about your background. How'd you get started in being an entrepreneur? Yeah, I uh, from uh, from a young age, I've always been the uh, outcast of just kind of looking around the classrooms and I always felt different, even in college, with the big auditorium, 600 students. I really just didn't feel like it was for me. It was always something more than just going through the system, basically. And uh, my background from Detroit, Michigan, uh, inner city, west side, and got into entrepreneurship actually through network marketing was my first intro, where a, a friend of mine in college, he, he sent me an email on Facebook at the time. And he said, hey, come to my dorm or as like an apartment or something, he showed me the cash flow quadrants from Robert Kiyosaki. You know, the other people in the room, they were laughing and they were leaving like, oh, this is a joke. And when I saw that video, I mean, I stared at the TV for about 10 minutes and it just, it, it, the rubber band effect, when it stretched me, I just couldn't go back. Ever since then, I just started making inventions and things like that. So how did you get out to LA? Uh, long story short, uh, I lived in it. So I left Detroit after college and I went to uh, Atlanta. I was in Atlanta for 10 years and uh, the energy just pulled me out here. It's a little difficult to do a raise out in Atlanta, in my opinion, unless you're B2B stricken. I love Atlanta. It was great to me, but uh, the West Coast just really just pulled me. And I, I tried to stay in Atlanta, but I, I could just feel it pulling me. And uh, I love the weather and I, I came out here to visit a year before I moved and I said I wanted to move here and the law of attraction pulled me out here. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, it's all good. Um, where'd you go to college if I, I just, just curious. Michigan State University. Michigan State. Spartan Dogs. Yep. I, I did my undergrad at Central Michigan, just up the road. Nice. So, nice. But, uh, that's nice. cool. So, what would you study at MSU? Yeah. What did you study uh, there? Oh, what did I study? Uh, merchandise and management and marketing. Very cool. Um, yep. Yeah, I, I, I like state. My uh, my cousins all went to state, so I uh, I don't I have I have very much a big affinity for MSU. So go Spartans. Um, so you uh, became an entrepreneur, moved out to LA. Tell me, what is this project you're working on? What is AFID? AFID is an ecosystem where we're disrupting a nine to five. Uh, what we're doing is allowing people to digitize themselves into a bot. And this bot will do a variation of things to make money. Uh, the reason we created the company is we got, we saw people working 40 hours a week and we said, well, there has to be some way that we can make money and not have to trade time for money. And that's how the company developed. Uh, the AFID is actually an insect that can clone itself. So that's where the name comes from. So is this um, something that you're bootstrapping or did you get do a raise then or are you funded? How did you kind of, uh, how'd you get started with the cash flow on this? Yeah, we bootstrap completely, 100%. We had a little little cash from a, a few friends, few believe, early believers. I uh, really appreciate them, but the rest is completely bootstrap. So you said you're coming out pretty soon with your beta then? Yep, within the next few weeks, the mobile application will be out. You'll be able to create your bot. And um, we have, that's the B2C portion. The B2B portion will, will come out uh, a few months later for enterprises. 
So walk me through this. You, know, you said you're sure. focused on the non-95, you know, workspace. You don't, you want to decouple time and money from one another. In other words, you want people to make money when they sleep. So I'm very interested in these technologies. So give me some, give me some examples. So uh, the listeners who might not understand what that means, tell me sure. how me is a non-developer, how I could leverage one of your digitized bots and make money when I sleep. Yeah, you would come onto the platform and you would get a subscription. It, depending on how many bots you want, but if you just get the basic one, you just pay a subscription every month. And then uh, it's already pre-trained. So we train the bot to basically go out there and sell through e-commerce partners that we have. So every time it sells something on the entire internet of, of where we place your bot, you make money. And then we're going to open it up for the developer community to create other ways for your bot to make money too. So you can just install them like an app store. Imagine it being uh, artificial intelligence, foreign exchange trading, or cryptocurrency trading. You can just add that like a widget, and then your bot will make money from these different widgets, these different add-ons. We call them drivers. So what you're saying is, so essentially you're taking and creating a bot that can do online retail sales. So say I'm an Amazon reseller. Is that the kind of thing that I could use this for? Yeah, for example, let's say we get business A and they have an e-commerce platform because they're one of our platforms that got a chatbot system for us. We'll take the raw bot and put it on that website. If it sells something, you get a commission for it. Interesting. So if I want to leverage your bot, do I actually have to buy inventory too then kind of thing? If you, if you want to, uh, could you rephrase that? Or so is this something like if I want to make money with the bot, I have to buy inventory from one place and then sell it in another place kind of thing? You don't, you don't have to do anything. We do all the work for you. All you have to do is just, it's already programmed into our infrastructure. All you have to do is pay, pay a subscription. And the things that you want your bot to do, you can just add those skills or job tasks to it. So this works for selling retail items, but then you said there's the ability then to use it as a trading bot as well? Mm-hmm. For example, uh, one of one of our drivers is going to be CoinGenius, their artificial intelligence cryptocurrency trading platform. You would, you would basically add that driver, and then the money that you make from trading there through artificial intelligence will help your money pool. So imagine you're making money from this driver, that driver, this driver, that driver. You're making money from all of these different things while you sleep, where your body's doing the work. How'd you come up with the idea? I was working for uh, I was working for Apple for a while, and uh, the, the call volume was really insane. It was really, really insane. And I said, uh, I wish I could clone myself, and I could make money off what I'm doing and make money while I'm at the beach. And uh, I left the company, and got a couple other crazies to believe in me, and they joined the team too. So, are you the lead developer? Uh, I do know front end, but I am not the lead developer. Our CTO, Sean Ross, is the lead developer. So where do you think this is going and how would it segue into the future of the gig economy? Uh, I see this as being the new way for everyone to make money. People are used to DoorDash or Uber, uh, but you, those even those companies, it's a little dangerous because they're coming out with the, the automation a ride shares. So if you don't actually own a Tesla, like a Tesla robo taxi, then uh, you're kind of out of business. It's taking away some of your volume. Uh, people are afraid of robots taking our jobs, but in my opinion, uh, if robots don't take our, our jobs, then we'll always be at work per se, trading time for money. Uh, so we're preventing singularity in essence. So it's interesting, like that, that Luddite fear of automation, you know, in the history of this country, at least since the Industrial Revolution, there's usually been a net increase in jobs when you've actually had automation come in. Yep. And a lot of people, it's funny because you, you seem, there's a lot of tech pros from California that seem to think that in mass, all of a sudden, all these people are going to be unemployed and it's going to be starvation in the streets and pitchforks for them, right? <laughs> but I actually, it, the history doesn't show that. And, and there's a couple yeah. of reasons why, I think, is that, um, one, a lot of times people through attrition, a lot, of, a lot of these things don't happen overnight, these like revolutions, right? And what ends up happening is you have, you have a lot of people that through attrition will, you know, 
just go away, retire anyway, and that that job won't be refilled. So that's a big part of it. But on top of that, you'll find that a lot of innovations come out of it. So for instance, the the buggy whip people and, and the, you know, the, uh, you know, horse and buggy kind of folks went out of business. But then there was a whole lot of other jobs that came up to build the auto industry, for instance. Now, you're from Detroit. I'm from the Detroit area as well. And, and if you look at all the stuff that went into that, it was actually much bigger markets that were created from that and much more growth and many more jobs that were created, even though the loss of one industry led way to that. It's like that whole creative destruction thing. So I don't fear the robots. I want the robots. And I want the little thing in my brain to make me smarter. So um, <laughs> I, I'm excited about it. Um, so disrupting. So how would you say that your, your bot system is disruptive to what's happening right now? The current nine to five system is go to work eight in the morning, get home at five, fight traffic for an hour, cook dinner, do homework with the kids or do homework with the kids, cook dinner and repeat five times a week. And that shit is 1992 right 1987 whatever you want to call it it's the it's the old way of thinking and most people don't have enough time to give to not to mention if you have a wife or you know husbands at home or whatever uh, these people you're not spending time with your family and if, if you were to calculate all of the hours that you're allocating towards your job over a lifetime it's astronomical at least over 100 probably over 172,000 hours of your life is dedicated to that and I'm not saying that uh, with AFID, you're stop, you'll stop working, but maybe it reduces it to 20 hours a week, right? Maybe you only have to, maybe you can work on your side hustle. Now that becomes full time because you're making money from AFID and now you're a freelancer and that covers your income. So that's ultimately our goal is to get that volume and liquidity high enough to uh, help what we call our controllers, your controller of the bot to help you guys make money. Yeah, I like what I'm hearing. So you mentioned that you're doing artificial intelligence and I get that with the bot, but you've also mentioned blockchain. How are you incorporating blockchain technology with AFID? If a, if a user wants to sign up decentralized, meaning Google, Facebook, or email isn't used to sign up, um, that means the data is, is off the Richter. That means Google doesn't have it. Facebook doesn't have it. They don't have your information. You can sign up with your phone number and that's just tied to you. Uh, that's one way we're using it for data. Uh, the analytics, the money that you make, all that information is decentralized. So that's not stored by AFIT. You'll see it in your control panel, but we have that on the decentralized portion. As far as the payments are concerned, we have what's called same day pay. If the user decides to transact with cryptocurrency, then you as the controller would get paid in the same currency that was used. So if they use cryptocurrency, you get paid the same day. And we're starting off on Ethereum uh, or private until we eventually will move to our own mainnet sometime in the future. But Ethereum, you'll usually get your transaction within, it could be three minutes, 15 minutes, really just depends on how busy it is. So what cryptocurrencies can people pay on your system with, well, at least out of the gate? Uh, out of the gate will be our own native token named the Abion. Amy, are you going to just keep it on your own or are you going to open it up to other cryptos at some point? Possibly. Yeah. We're, we're, <laughs> we're, uh, we're working on it. We haven't made any announcements yet, but you'll be first to know. <laughs> we should talk. Yeah. I can make a deal for you. Um, Sounds good. Yeah, actually. Um, it could be. Um, so tell me um, overall, what's your go-to-market plan? You know, I talk to a lot of entrepreneurs. I've been an entrepreneur for a long time. And it seems with a lot of tech guys, there's not always, there always seems like they're missing a marketing thing. Do you have like a marketing guy? Do you have a good marketing strategy? Do you have a plan to get this implemented into the market? For certain. We have a, we have a strong team. There are just about 20 people in the company, but Alexander Stone, she's our chief growth officer and she's working along with Marcus Banks, a part of the sales team to execute our plan uh, what we plan to do, we have, um, there are some television, we can't announce it just yet, but we have a few television appearances coming up on big networks to talk about it. So that's part of it. Uh, that'll have a, a reach to upwards of a billion reach over time in a, in a web episode series. And then we have a few uh, celebrity people. I know it's a little 
a gray area when it comes to celebrities and cryptocurrency, things like that. But we do have a uh, few of my celebrity friends that will be uh, creating their, their bot. We call them A-clones, uh, but they'll be creating their A-clones on our platform. And then uh, as far as social media is concerned, we have, our campaign is called Free Society. Basically, where we just want the society to do as we choose, just to be a free thinker, have free time. And uh, that's going to be really, really exciting. Uh, we have a documentary coming out based upon creatives and thinkers in Los Angeles called Free Society. And it'll uh, outline how people are using AFIT and the ecosystem. Wow. So I can tell just by the, the expressions on your face, you got, you got the drive, you got the creativity, and I like to see that. Um, you're an entrepreneur, and, and that, that's, that clearly shows that you kind of got this passion. What kind of drives you? What makes you tick? <sighs> to be honest with you, I've been, my whole life was like a nomadic. I was always just sleeping on my aunt floors and friends' couches and, you know, what family is trying to get things together. And uh, just being that uncomfortable made me never want to be comfortable. And um, I have a son, I have a four-year-old son, and I see how he looks at me and tells other kids, hey, that's my, when I was on Steve Harvey, he said, oh, that's my dad, that's my dad. And that was, that was pretty awesome for me. So just looking at him is, is, a, is a pretty big part. And knowing that the majority of people in my family uh, really don't leave the city of Detroit or can't afford expenses to go on vacation next, not during this, particular pandemic but generally speaking to just go up and have a vacation and be able to take off for a week they're confined to uh these shackles of of their of this treadmill that they run back to and i think a person that's doing what they want to do is success it doesn't there's nothing wrong with a job if that's what you wake up and love to do but if you're just doing it for the money you probably died a long time ago uh, that's what drives me you know i think um uh... I think I can relate to that in a lot of ways. And, and I think what it comes down to is, is do you feel like you have meaningful work and meaningful purpose? And unfortunately, I think we have an epidemic in this country of people that don't have either. And I think that's what you touch on. And, and I'm not going to give you my sob story, but you know, I have the typical tragic childhood kind of experiences, but those do affect you and they do mold you and they do give you perspective and uh, there's a joke out there to, uh, for entrepreneurs. They say, what childhood trauma drives you to success kind of thing, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but it, it is true, though, in a lot of ways. You know, it's like, you know, even at my age, I, you know, I'm only, I've only I've built a couple companies, but I've only sold one. I've only had one small exit as a serial entrepreneur. I don't consider myself like, you know, Elon Musk or anything, but I'm still hungry and I'm still working. And I'm still working toward that. I'm, and it's funny because I get around a lot of people and I'm just as excited about projects that I'm working on now in my late 40s that I was when I was in my, my 30s, you know, and because I still have that kind of drive too. And, yeah. and you can tell when other people have it. And I definitely see that in you, Brandon. So you, Brandon, sure. where can people find out more about you and AFID? Yeah, you can find out on AFID.io. That's A-P-H-I-D.io. And we're on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. Uh, you can just search AFID. It'll come up. It should be the first result, hopefully. And then uh, me personally is just Brandon Cooper. And my last name, the, uh, the O's are zeros for Cooper. I'm on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, et cetera, as well. And folks, we'll have all those linked up on the post at robmcneely.com. Brandon, thank you so much for coming on the show today. I've really appreciated your time. I appreciate you having me. Thanks a lot. And right, you Rob. come back next time when you got some updates. You have a great day. You know it. You too. <laughs> thank you for listening to the Rob McNeely program. Make sure you check us out on the web at robmcneely.com and subscribe to our podcast at YouTube, iTunes, and on the Google Play Store.